መድረክ ለጌታ ቃልና ለቃሉ ጌታ እነተኛ በመሆን መጽሐፍ ቅዱስን በንባብ በማቅረብ የመጽሐፍ ቅዱስ ትምህርቶችን በማካፈል ያ ያ ላይ ተሰሰው ደም አስቀድሞ የተሰጠው ስፋዬ እድመት ምሆን ይልይባል ለመጽሐፍ ቅዱስና መንፈሳዊ ጥያቄዎች ሰንሶችን ለመስጠት ስተት መርቶችን በቃሉ በመመከትና ሐሳቦችን በመክለት ቅዱሳንን በማስተካከል ለታሪካዊና መጻፍ ቅዱሳዊ የክርስቲና እምነት በመካቴ በመቆም አብረን እናገለግል It is a blessing and a joy uh Bob to uh, meet with you and thank you for carving a very precious time uh, to share Uh, what's in your, in your heart about uh, AIPM and the work being done in Ethiopia? Um, it was a very short notice, but you are very happy to be interviewed today. And thank you very much. And uh, I also would like to thank Solomon and uh, preparing for uh, us this room, uh, Java Tree Coffee. And thank you very much, Sol. And uh, Bob, uh, I have a few questions uh, today. And the first one is the relationship between you and AIPM started. Uh, what inspired the connection between you and Dr. Desta uh, or uh, AIPM? So that's really a miracle in many ways that uh, in 2006, uh, a very good friend and pastor of mine who had been a missionary in Ethiopia asked me to accompany him to Durrani, Ethiopia. And uh, the reason was to assist him in teaching at a missionary training school called the uh, Kelly Howitt Ethiopian School for Missions. And he and I uh, were there uh, for two or three weeks together. And the founder of that school happened to be uh, Dr. Desta. And that's when I met him. And it happened that it was January of that year in 2006 and every January in uh, this small ministry at the time called Amberisio International Prayer and Missions Movement uh, had a meeting on top of Mount Amberisio and I was invited to go to the top of that mountain uh, with my friend and uh, experience uh, a prayer meeting, a worship time and uh, prayer for the nations. It was a wonderful time. Bob, what is AIPM stand for? Uh, what is the acronym uh, AIPM? And um, what about Ambaricho? What is special about Ambaricho, the mountain, Mount Ambaricho? Okay, I'm going to start with uh, the mountain itself. Uh, Ambaricio is a mountain that uh, is about 10,000 feet in height from sea level. And uh, it was the, the center of uh, uh, the worship of witch doctors in the Kambada region for many, many, many years. And uh, when the last witch doctor became and submitted to Jesus for his salvation and became a Christian, uh, that became then a place of prayer for Christians. And uh, so that's what the Amoricio International Prayer and Missions Movement, that's what AIPM, the acronym stands for, is named after that mountain uh, as a special place of prayer. And uh, might I, I might say too that recently, uh, the government of Ethiopia has recognized how special that mountain is. And uh, they are making it a, uh, uh, to actually, I should say, uh, promote it as a, uh, a tourist destination. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's uh, the significance of the mountain and what AIPM needs. Okay. Um, who is Dr. Desta Langana? Uh, could you introduce him in a, sh in a very short term? Um, 
and uh, save uh, the detailed version uh, for the stem cell in the future. Uh, probably we will meet him soon, uh, sooner or later after this COVID-19. Uh, but who is he? Who is Desta? Uh, Dr. Desta Langena is a, uh, uh, his doctor is in missiology, doctorate. Uh, he became a Christian as a very young man and uh, after being imprisoned by the communists as a young man uh, his faith was very strong and uh, he had no place to turn except to God in prayer and so the significance of Dr. Desta and this whole movement is really uh, what he learned and how God sustained him because of an incredible prayer life. Mm. In this book, uh, Desta means joy. It's a biography of Desta himself. Is it autobiography or biography? Um, it is an autobiography. Yeah. Desta wrote it and we published it here. And um, could you introduce that book for us, please? Sure. So uh, Desta means joy. Uh, his mother uh, named him Desta after she was saved. And, uh, and it's actually saved Desta too, but I'll leave that for Desta to explain. Uh, this book uh, is his autobiography from the time he was a young man. Uh, it introduces a lot of missionary and people that had an influence on his uh, Christian growth through his life, uh, through his education, through everything, and uh, what, how he has dedicated his life uh, to spreading the gospel. And in uh, that book, um, um, it's, he says about uh, the, um, the beginnings of Ambaricho prayer ministry um, in early 1990s. Yes. And uh, yes. how did the prayer on Mount Ambaricho started? You know, it started with young people. Uh, his, one of his daughters being one of those people that uh, started going up there uh, maybe somewhat of as an adventure, but also to go up there and pray because they were all uh, strong believers in Jesus Christ. And uh, one time, after one trip, uh, the one thing that these young people, especially the young girls, said, you know, is that we're very thirsty and are hungry after that long climb up and down, you know. Maybe we should start collecting a little bit of money uh, and their idea was to buy uh, s some food and some drink. And For the pilgrims. Yes. So, but it was just a few people and they were leading them. So they, uh, the next time they went up, um, they pulled a little bit of money together. It wasn't very much. I can't remember how much. It's $51. I read it in the book. You did? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 51 in September. Yeah. So they, uh, uh, his daughter came down and said, we, Daddy, we've done this. What should we do? I mean, how should we do this? And, and it, with that point, Dr. Desta, God just laid on the chart. He said, well, maybe you should give some of it for missions and then use some of it for drink or some food, however. So they gave half. And they gave it to Dr. Desta. And then he was, said, well, well, now what am I going to do? And that really was the big, the very beginning of that movement. And with that uh, $51, he didn't know what to do with, but um, uh, there was a burden of uh, um, the Holy Spirit for using this money to send missionaries. Yes. And that was the seed of money. The beginning, yeah. And it was a, a while longer before they actually were collecting enough that they could actually send their first missionary out into the field. AIPM is a sending agency, a sending organization as well uh, yes. for missionaries in Ethiopia. What does it do in Ethiopia right now? Um, uh, what ministry, what, what is the ministry uh, currently involved in doing in Ethiopia? Are there local inland missionaries still in the country? Yes, you know, uh, first and foremost, uh, 
AIPM will always be first a prayer ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole movement is based on prayer and it's sustained by prayer. They trust God to provide whatever provision is needed. But it became a mission sending agency as well. And so uh, many of the missionaries, we have 250 missionaries in the field today. 250. Yes. And uh, some of them partially supported by AIPM and some of them fully supported by AIPM financially for their families and the missionaries. Um, some of the missionaries get some money from their church and others, we have many that are converted Muslims mm. and there is no money from their families. Mm. In many cases, they've been uh, disowned by their families. So, uh, but the basis of their whole mission is prayer. So before a missionary does anything, he lays it before the Lord. And when he receives the answer from the Lord as to how to proceed, then they move. So uh, today, AIPM, uh, we, we support missionaries, we train missionaries, we counsel them, we uh, hold uh, uh, conferences in different areas of the country. Uh, on behalf of the missionaries and uh, and we pray for the missionaries. Mm. Uh, what are some of the blessings and challenges of uh, AIPM, uh, Bob, uh, including uh, the current uh, challenge and situation that we have with uh, COVID-19? Yes, um, well, the, the, I think the, the biggest blessing I can say that I personally received from working with AIPM, and that's pretty much my job today uh, as a volunteer, is the number of people that are hearing the gospel and receiving the gospel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's thousands of people mm. uh, accepting the Lord. Many, many Muslims mm. and our outreach uh, to spreading the gospel and teaching the gospel to the uh, the Orthodox, and a huge uh, response by young people in the universities. So it just seems like God every year lays another challenge and another blessing on the ministry to uh, help spread that gospel. And I can say from my own eyes and ears and what I've seen is, is that the the youth and the young people of Ethiopia are on fire for the Lord, and mm. what a blessing that is. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned um, university students, and um, recently when we were in Ethiopia in January, uh, we were in uh, uh, Bahardar area, and uh, we met the girl that was uh, uh, coordinating the ministry of AIPM with the university students there, and uh, what a blessing. So yeah, that, uh, uh, she, uh, uh, we call her Brooke, mm -hmm. and uh, Brooke Dowd. Yeah, she's a wonderful young lady. Uh, uh, we ended up, well, one of our uh, board uh, has scholarshiped her to uh, attend the uh, Kelly Howard School for Missions, and uh, the end of this year, she'll become a full time uh, missionary with AIPM. Uh, focusing mainly on uh, uh, the uh, university students. Mm -hmm. All the missionaries, uh, before they go to the field, they have to go through a training? Um, we wish they could all go through a training. Mm -hmm. They are all evangelists or pastors. And so they, of course, have had Bible training and uh, some of them seminary and so on. and. Uh, that is a big challenge for us, actually, because uh, they need further training. And there's not a lot of uh, places in Ethiopia to get that, and we currently have limited resources to do that. So right now, as an example, we are uh, in the midst of a building project to actually build a training center. 
and uh, uh, it's a challenge because uh, we uh, we haven't raised enough money to complete it yet. Uh, we have uh, we've raised some to begin with, but we don't want to take money that we use to support missionaries that would stop us from sending more missionaries. For the building. Santa. So we have an initiative now. We've kind of uh, re-looked at how we're going to do this. And uh, this is a challenge that falls mainly on uh, those of us in the USA that are supporting uh, AIPM. And that's to uh, see if we can get some grant money to uh, expedite the building of that and have a training center where we would use uh, um, itinerant teachers to come in and do classes before we send them to the field, before we send those missionaries to the field. And I have, I totally believe and I have faith that God will solve this problem with us. Currently, most of the missionaries are being trained in EKSM, you say. Uh, and uh, Dr. Gusta was, um, part of that school. What was his relationship with that school? Well, Dr. Desta founded that school. He was the, and then he was the director of it until he was uh, sent back to the USA to get his doctorate at uh, Western Seminary. So uh, uh, we still have a, an association with that school, but really, uh, only the missionaries that come from the Kalihawit Church will have been through that school. And even not all of them. Uh, some We have some that aren't. So most of our missionaries did not go there. In fact, Brooke may be the first non-Kalihawit student in that school. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, when we were in Ethiopia um, this January, uh, we went as far north to as uh, Bahardar and as far south as Arbamink and the Dorsey area. Tell us about a little about the Dorsey area. Uh, oh. What is happening there? That is an amazing place. The most beautiful place that I've seen in Ethiopia. However, I haven't seen all of Ethiopia. So, but uh, the Dorsey people have been, they have rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, they actually have been uh, not just rejecting it, but kind of violently rejecting it. Uh, missionaries in the church uh, has not been real welcome there. So the movement, even though there are a few small churches that have been planted there, uh, they have had very little effect. So. Um, we had a church in Dallas that wanted to reach those people and uh, they have funded two missionary families to work that area and live there with them and so now we have two missionary families that are reaching out to the Dorsey people and to those small little churches that are up there but to get them to work together to reach the people and uh, we've been doing this now for almost a year and uh, they're starting to really see some, uh, some progress there. And so that's the story of the Dorsey, but it's a high mountain area, way up high in the mountains in uh, Southwest Ethiopia. Wonderful, Bob, thank you. Um, I will come back to AIPM USA, but before that, one last question about uh, AIPM in Ethiopia. Uh, every year, um, a prayer meeting is held in on Mount Amparicho. What is it about? Tell us. Um, the 19th of January, on our calendar, uh, every year, uh, there is a prayer meeting where thousands of people come from all over Ethiopia and they climb to the top of Mount Amaricio and they spend a day fasting in prayer for world missions. World missions. Now, uh, there is a significance to that day as well and I'm going to let you explain that because uh, I don't quite remember but it's also an Orthodox holiday. It is a Tumkat holiday. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that much I know and uh, what they're celebrating. So it, in fact, that makes it kind of interesting for us because uh, I remember the first time going up there is we went through some of the villages to drive to the backside of the mountain uh, where it's a little easier for us uh, out of shape Americans to climb. Uh, <laughs> there would be it's... celebrations going on through those villages yes. by the Orthodox Church yeah. as well. So, yes, so we climb up. And the first time I went there in 2006, there were about 85,000 people up mm. there uh, worshiping, praying. Uh, it was amazing. 85,000. 85,000. Mm. And uh, maybe you can estimate how many were up there. Last yeah. year, yeah, I think it was I was told that it was about uh, seventy thousand people. Yeah, that's... Um, because there was some kind of civil unrest around there, and that was uh, the only reason uh, for the number to be lower than eighty thousand. Yeah. They were expecting a hundred thousand actually. Yes, yeah. there is. There has been. There have been as many as one hundred and twenty or thirty thousand people up there, and it depends. I think there's a lot of factors because they come from all over. Hmm. The people. Hmm. Other than prayer, what is done on that day? Uh, there's a lot of worship. There are men that go up the day before and they set up uh, generators and they bring their electric music instruments up there and uh, there are worship leaders and they just praise the Lord. There's just praise and prayer, praise and more praise. And then prayer, and then people, uh, uh, people t then spontaneously give for world missions, mm -hmm. what little they have. And uh, I can tell you, I witnessed, I witnessed people literally give everything they had that day, uh, and saying, "Well, what about tomorrow?" And they just, they have the faith that the Lord will provide what they need tomorrow mm. so that's a faith that um, I would say we don't see every place by everybody so praise God yes <laughs> Let's go, 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 let's go
AIPM, uh, tell us about uh, AIPM USA. Okay, well let me start by telling you what AIPM USA is, how it started, and then I can tell you how I was got involved and what my role is currently. Um, there's a, uh, a, a professor, Rick Kallenberg, actually was the founder of AIPM USA. Um, he had known Dr. Desta for quite a while and uh, was instrumental in getting him to the USA to get his doctorate. And so he started a, uh, challenged a group of men to come together to uh, raise support for the missionaries in Ethiopia. And uh, it was a uh, informal group of men that came together and uh, they met four or five times a year. And uh, they were sending money on over to uh, Ethiopia. So in uh, uh, 2017, Dr. Desta called me and he was at the time in Canada. It was toward the end of the year. And uh, he asked me if I would be willing to come to Canada so he could introduce me to some very good friends of his. And so I did manage to fly up there and I met uh, two pastors, their families, and it was then that Dr. Desta uh, proposed that I join this group of men uh, in supporting and he had a special challenge that he wanted me, uh, for a reason that he wanted me there, and that was to register uh, it as a board here, as a not-for-profit organization, to have an identity and, uh, and to grow the mission. So uh, I joined it and uh, the uh, first meeting they uh, made me the chairman of the board and then later we added some more people and, uh, and we started and we became registered in a not-for-profit organization formed entirely to support AIPM in Ethiopia. And uh, to this day, there we have nobody that is paid here. Everything that we raise goes to supporting missions in mm -hmm. Ethiopia. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the people that they're willing to do that, so. Great, um, very last question. Now, how could people get involved in this ministry? Um, of AIPM? Well, we're, uh, whether you're talking about AIPM in Ethiopia or AIPM USA. In both. Or remember that uh, we're first a prayer ministry. Yes. And so we, we ask people to set a time, uh, some time aside at whatever schedule they can do to just pray uh, that God provide for this mission and guide us in this mission. That's the first thing. And I know uh, 
it sounds easy, but it's also easy to forget. Uh, that's first. In fact, somebody that isn't willing to commit to prayer, um, there really isn't any other thing that they could do for us. But a prayer warrior, we also would ask that they pray uh, for the provision to help support the mission. And again, it all goes to Ethiopia. And uh, I think this would be a good place for me to tell you too, is that um, most of the support for the missionaries in Ethiopia comes from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. We uh, encouraging. We uh, we we supply every year a more and more of a significant amount, but that just allows us to send more missionaries to the field. <laughs> so uh, uh, last year we added 50 missionaries. Wow! And uh, that partly was the result of increased giving in the U.S. So uh, that's the, uh, and then the third thing which is important too and that I ask uh, church leaders, pastors, teachers uh, that become uh, believers in what AIPM is doing is to uh, pray about going to Ethiopia. I love to, uh, to take teams of people to Ethiopia to minister to our missionaries. Mm. And they can be teachers, they may even just be an encourager. Mm. Uh, the, the Ethiopian missionaries love to have us come there and they're encouraged by our willingness to uh, travel so far and to uh, pray with them and pour into their ministry. So there's the three main things, prayer, support, and uh, going to the field. And I might add that uh, we're, we're praying now about maybe changing one thing in the USA and that we're thinking that we really, uh, we may actually start uh, and try to get uh, a full-time or part-time uh, person Ethiopian to help us reach the Ethiopian church in the USA. And that could be a person that is supported by the mission. And so we're looking very seriously at that and we're praying about it right now. And that'll be a, uh, a big discussion in our upcoming board meeting next month. Bob, I really uh, enjoyed your presence, uh, interviewing you with uh, about AIPM USA and the AIPM ministry in Ethiopia. God bless you. Oh, I am blessed all the time just to uh, have the opportunity to serve. I feel uh, serving with uh, AIPM uh, and Dr. Desta and his staff is a gift to me from God. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen.